talk about their problems with regards to integration, integration of HIV services and sexual and reproductive health services. Through the same program, CADEM is implementing some work with men who have sex with men, sex workers, as well as injecting drug users in Zanzibar. And uh, that will be presented later on by Ben, my colleague, but I'll focus more on what we are doing with women living with HIV in Tanzania mainland. The first thing we noted at the beginning of the program last year was that uh, maternal mortality rates in Tanzania still remained high. And we were talking about 580 per 100,000 live births. Well, let me first start by apologizing. There was a mix-up in the presentation, so I'm not going to present on PowerPoint slides. The second thing that we noted was that uh, HIV prevalence was at 5.7% among the ages 15 to 49, with slightly higher rates among the women. But also, we noted that uh, without having proper M&E data based on anecdotal evidence, we noted that uh, there's quite some amount of deaths among women living with HIV, and they're related to sexual and reproductive health issues. Our biggest concern was that in Tanzania, we hadn't mobilized a critical mass of women living with HIV to talk about their concerns, to consolidate their feelings, and to bring about a joint agenda and to advocate with the national government as well as decentralized district government. In Tanzania, decentralization and devolution is very strong. So the district authorities also make decisions and even sometimes bylaws and policies at that level. So, on noting this challenge, we communicated with the TIP, the PI program. And we agreed that CADEM will specifically mobilize the women living with HIV and look for a way of advocating. Advocating at the national level as well as advocating within the district councils. This was a small grant and like I said it was meant for catalytic effect. So we only worked with five women living with HIV. And they came from two different clusters district clusters of people living with HIV within, within Tanzania mainland in Dar es Salaam. Now the first thing we did with the women was to train them on integration. What is integration? What is the need for integration? Do we feel we like it? Some of them of course said, no, we don't really like this concept. Others said, this is great. But at the end of the 10 days training, they all felt well. Overall, we feel that integration is going to help us a lot. So after the training, we decided that the first step was to deploy them to go and talk to women living with HIV from house to house, door to door, and listen to what they feel about integration, collect their challenges, document, and then come back and present. So that's exactly what they did. They spoke to fellow, living, fellow women living with HIV, and brought bad feedback. Among the main challenges which were highlighted in terms of integration HIV and integration with SRH included gender-based violence. We are talking about forced or coerced sex. It included stigma and discrimination, especially at the service delivery point and also within the communities. It included uh, unwanted pregnancies. And uh, sometimes they felt that uh, they did not access family planning services the way they wanted. Another challenge was STI. The women living with HIV felt that they do not always access STI services promptly and in the quality that they would desire. The final biggest challenge that came up was uh, regarding breastfeeding and need for nutritional support. We all realized that uh, the guidelines have been changing constantly. And not all women living with HIV are aware of what the guidelines uh, require. And in many cases, there's a challenge with regards to needing additional nutritional support in order to enable them to breastfeed adequately. Now, after we had sat down and consolidated the feedback from the women living with HIV, now we made a plan to send out ambassadors. These, the five women were like torchbearers 
So we agreed that they are going to meet the district authorities. So they went and met the person who is responsible for planning in the district. That is the district planning officer, the DPLOs. They also met the district medical officers. And they talked about these challenges. They said, what can you do with your district budget? How can you influence services? What can you do to make sure that the services are timely, friendly, high quality, but also integrated? So immediately after that was done, we also made sure that there was one woman who represented the other women in the technical working group for integration. Now, uh, with regards to what has been done and the changes that we have noted, we have noted that within the districts that they went to, which were four urban districts, some awareness has been created. The district authorities now, when you talk to them about integration, they don't ask you questions like why, what. However, there's a challenge because uh, we still need to have the right standard operating procedures. We still need to do some training. We still need to create a different mindset. Again, uh, my colleagues, my co-speakers have already spoken about the vertical programming. So there's still some challenges. But we are happy that awareness has been created. But again, we note that we are talking about only four urban districts, but Tanzania has over 300 districts. So our impact is quite small. But we are not complaining because this was a catalytic grant. We also note that uh, because awareness has been created, more women are now wanting to be, to be engaged into the program to become advocates as well. So it is our intention that if the program is con to continue, then we will definitely bring in more women on board. At least in terms of piloting and testing, we have proved now that at least the five women could make a difference, even with a small grant. And I agree with Lawrence that it doesn't matter the amount of money, but rather it is the commitment to integration that matters. Now the other challenge uh, that we faced was, regards, was with regards to government policies. Again, in Tanzania, we are at the stage of now developing the integration models, the integration policies. I'm talking about national policies. So when you visit the districts and you say that we would love you to integrate HIV and SRH activities, the first question they'll ask you is, what policy are you referring to? What guideline are you referring to? Can you please make sure that all that you're proposing is integrated into our policies and guidelines. So much as we are saying that awareness has been created, but we still need the system strengthening approach to make sure that policies, guidelines, monitoring, human resource for health, all of that is addressed in order for us to claim that we have ultimately reached the end of our desire for integration. The other thing that uh, we also felt was that uh, working with lim women living with HIV as torch bearers and as advocates definitely was good. Because in some districts, the district authorities mentioned that we are going to listen to you seriously because you are actually talking about real life personal experiences. So we felt that uh, this is definitely a good approach, but in future, again, like I mentioned, there was a gap in the sense that uh, we may need to involve a larger representation of the networks of women living with HIV. In terms of the future, we are now developing uh, the National Multisectoral Strategic Framework, and all the TIP PI partners in Tanzania are advocating very strongly for inclusion of integration. Another thing that we have done is that uh, we have now expanded into Zanzibar Islands. These are two separate uh, ministries that deal with HIV and as well as the Ministry of Health. In terms of the future, we hope to discuss more with our partners and see what can be done for tomorrow. I wish to thank you very much for listening to this presentation. Thank you very much, Julie, um, especially uh, 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 uh